All right, welcome back to section um, six. We're talking about trapezoids and kites. Um, and we just got done talking about the specific characteristics of the isosceles trapezoid. But one thing that we can use with all trapezoids is the mid-segment theorem. And that was one of our vocabulary words. Um, remember that the mid-segment theorem is just the midpoints of the legs connected together. So notice that um, the leg AC and leg FD, and remember those are the legs because they are not the parallel ones. So I have midpoint B and midpoint E. I know it's a midpoint because I have the tick marks. AB is congruent to CB and FE is congruent to ED. I know those are the midpoints. So my thing is wanting to scroll. Um, I know that the mid-segment of the trapezoid is parallel to each base. So I know that BE is parallel to AF and is parallel to CD. So that's one of the characteristics. Um, it is parallel to the bases. And it also is a measure of one half the sum of the length of the bases. Now, we can set up an equation for that. Um, so the mid-segment which is BE equals one half of your base one which you can think is F or AF plus your base number two, which is CD. All right, let's see how we can use that information to solve a problem. So, um, in the figure, MN is our mid segment. So, I know that KM is congruent to JM. I know FN is congruent to GN. And I know it is also a trapezoid. So, I know that KF is parallel to JG. So um, the first thing I know is what we just put down. KF is parallel to MN because it's the mid segment. And I also know it's parallel to GJ because of this um, parallel to both bases. And I also know because it's a trapezoid and because it's the mid segment, I know that point M and point N are the midpoints. So because it's a mid-segment, I'm going to use this formula right here. My mid-segment is MN. So I'm going to put MN is equal to one half, and then I'm going to add the bases together. KF is a base plus JG is a base. So I'm just going to substitute those numbers in. My mid-segment is 30 equals 1 half of KF, which I know is 20, plus JG, which is X. I don't know that. That's what I'm trying to find. All right, there's a couple ways you can solve it. You can go ahead and distribute through that way. Or you can um, multiply both sides by 2 over 1 to get rid of that fraction. And I'm going to do that because my 2 over 1 cancels with that. So I'm left with 2 times 30, which is 60, equals my fraction cancels. So all I'm left with is this part that is inside of my parentheses. I like to get rid of my fractions as soon as possible. If I can, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. When I subtract 20, I get 40 equals x. So my other base, jg, actually equals 40. All right, since we just used the mid-segment theorem, why don't you um, stop this video and try to use that mid-segment theorem um, and that equation on your own. All right, here is your answer to your check your progress. 
All right, we are going to move on to kites now. Remember, kites are just a quadrilateral. They are not in that parallelogram family either. And our definition states that the quadrilateral has exactly two distinct pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So remember, adjacent means right next to you. So um, BC is congruent to CD. Those two are adjacent. They're touching. And AB is congruent to AD. So if a quadrilateral is a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular. So that reminds us of another parallelogram that we had earlier. But remember, this is not a parallelogram. So that's perpendicular, which means it makes a right angle. So just a reminder, we can probably use the Pythagorean theorem. To solve for a side, so um, you may have those two sides and you may have to find um, BC. So just keep that in mind. You can use the Pythagorean theorem possibly. And the second thing that a kite has is if it is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. So um, only one pair. Remember, in a parallelogram, we had two pairs. So only one pair of opposite congruent angles. And those opposite congruent angles are actually between the non-congruent sides. So notice it's a kite because JK is congruent to KL, JM is congruent to ML. So these um, angles, the opposite angles that are congruent, are actually in between those sides that are not congruent. So J is congruent to L. And just as a reminder, because we're looking at a quadrilateral, the interior angles sum equals n minus 2 times 180, so 4 minus 2 times 180. So that sum, just as a refresher, equals 360 degrees. So all four of those angles equals 360 degrees. All right, so we are going to look at a kite, see if we can solve some problems. So we have a kite, and we are asked to find the angle x, y, z, x, y, z. You could also call that um, angle y also if you wanted to. All right, so what do we know? Well, the first thing we know, it is a kite. So I know that I have one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. Remember, those opposite angles are actually in between the two non-congruent sides. So X would actually be congruent to angle Z. So the measure of angle X equals 121. So the measure of angle Z has to equal 121 also. All right, and I also know because it's a quadrilateral, what we just talked about up here, the interior angles all add up to equal 360 degrees. So if I'm missing just one of them, I can add all the other three angles together and set them equal to 360 degrees. So I can say 73 plus 121 plus 121, those are our congruent angles plus the measure of angle x, y, z equals 360. If I add, combine like terms, I can say this is 315, which equals 360, plus the measure of angle x, y, z. I just moved everything down. If I subtract 315 from both sides, 
the measure of angle X, Y, Z now can equal 45 degrees. All right, and the second way you can use a kite is to find the side lengths like we talked about a little bit earlier. So um, because it's a kite, I know that the diagonals are perpendicular. And because they're perpendicular, all four of these angles are right angles, which actually, if you break it down even further, they make right triangles. So keep that in mind. So we have, in our picture, we have that NR is 6, we have that MR is 8, and we are asked to find PN. Well, I also know that NP equals NM because of those consecutive um, sides that are equal. So because I know that MN um, forms that right triangle right there, I can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to find my missing side over here. So I can say 6 squared plus 8 squared equals NM squared. And I know that 6 squared is 36 plus 64. 8 squared equals nm squared. I'm going to keep simplifying. 100 equals nm squared. So I'm going to square root that to solve. So nm equals 10. Well, I know that nm equals 10. And I'm trying to find pn. Well, Going back to what we talked about before, I also know that NP equals 10 because they are congruent. We right, go ahead and stop this video and do your checkpoints, and then this video will be complete. Here are your answers for the last two checkpoints of the section and the chapter. Um, hope you got something out of these videos, and um, hope to see you back next time.